Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. How's it going? This is Joe, and today I'm going to unbox a few things. So I have a, uh, I have a few lights from a company called JJC. Uh, they contacted me and they said they wanted to send me some lights because I don't know if you've seen my review on the, uh, on the solar lights. I tested a bunch of them and I wanted to see which one was the best. That video has quite a number of views, and so these companies want to send me stuff. So I said, okay, fine, I'll do it. Um, I'm here at home, as you can tell. So if you hear kids in the background, uh, if you hear some Moana, then uh, yeah, that's what's going on. We're live right now anyway, so that's that's what the deal is. Uh, yeah, you see our baby pictures in the background here. So that's what uh, I'm unboxing. And for everybody who tunes into my channel for the audio stuff that I do, I have something for you guys too. I am unboxing a, a small equalizer from Behringer. So I think a few times last time I talked about how, uh, you know, EQ, graphic EQs kind of fell, fell, you know, fell in popularity, right? They used to be included with a lot of receivers back in the 70s and 80s. You'd buy a receiver and it'd have a graphic equalizer. And nowadays you get something and it has no equalizer, right? Or it's buried in a menu somewhere. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Who's the Grizz? What's up? Unbox all the things. What's up? What's up? So, um, let's see. What should I unbox first? I'll probably unbox the lights first. You know, I know that's not what you're here for, but I'm waiting for everybody to get in. Um, I'm also here in the chat, so make sure if you have something to say, go ahead and say it over here. Okay? All right. Um, first things first, I do want to say that JJC, this company with the lights, they did send this to me and, uh, you know, for review purposes. And, you know, I have to be careful of that because these guys are sending me stuff for free, right? In exchange for me kind of giving them exposure for their products. Um, now where you have to be careful is, uh, and this is what I try to be, make clear to them is I'm going to unbox this thing. Uh, I'm going to take a take a look at it and see how they work, but I have to give an honest review, right? They can't say, hey, uh, you know, let me send you some stuff, and then before you try it out, give me five stars on Amazon. That's not how this works, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm not going to accept some free lights for, you know, in exchange for my integrity. That it, it doesn't work like that, right? So you send me free stuff, cool, I'll give you exposure, so I got this set up, so it took me a while to set all this up. I'm going to do that and I'm going to talk about your stuff and then if it's really good, then I'll let people know. But if it isn't good, you know, <laughs> it just isn't good, right? So just something to keep in mind there. Um, D Grizz, um, I'm always in the chat here. So uh, he says, I've been eyeballing the Behringer Ultra Curve Pro DEQ2496, but it is expensive. The Ultra Curve, is that, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that is not a graphic EQ, is that a, is that a parametric EQ? So for people who don't know the difference, a graphic EQ uses the little little sliders, right? Whereas, um, whereas a parametric EQ, you adjust like a, for a certain frequency, you can boost it up or down, but then you can also affect how wide of a frequency that it affects, that's called the Q. And the the reason why you'd want um, a parametric eq typically is that um think about a graphic eq right so let's say you bump this you'd expect that bump to go here right but what ends up happening let's say if you bump this bump this up a little bit this slider up this slider up right you end up instead of getting like a curve that looks like that you end up getting a curve that looks more like or <laughs> like that like where all the where all the frequencies are centered you get a bump and then it goes back down and a bump and the... anyway, it's not perfect, but uh, graphic EQs, in my opinion, are better than nothing. And so we'll see right now if that's true or not. Uh, DeGrizz <laughs> says it does room correction and parametric EQ and normal EQ since, so it's nice. All right, Doc Holidays, how you doing? How you doing, how you doing? All right, let's get to this. Let's be quick about this. Um, so as far as these lights, I have to admit that I did unbox these earlier to make sure that everything was there. And I actually tried them out and they work, right? 
All right, let me see if you can see me here. Let me just double check my stuff. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so here's the first one. This is a outdoor barn light. So it says, so LEDs are cool, right? Uh, 40 watts, uh, photo cell included. So this is a dust till dawn, right? And so the point of this is, you know, in the backyard, when the, when the sun goes down, this light will notice that it's starting to go down. And so it'll turn on and stay on. And so, uh, yeah, 3000 K daylight. Uh, yeah. You notice all this, I don't know where you guys live, but over here, almost all the street lights now are all, uh, they're all LED, which is kind of weird. So when you drive at night, it's no longer like yellowish, you know what I mean? Kind of, if you're old school, you remember seeing a yellowish tint to everything at night, right? Now it's not like that. You go out and everything kind of has like a bluish tint. All right. So anyway, that will look great on my barn. Yes, <laughs> my barn. Uh, yeah. So here we go. All right. Paper. We don't need all that. Let me just put this on the desk. I'm not gonna hold this. All right, all right. Move the mic a little bit. There we go. One second here. All right, yeah, Maui. All right. Zoom in. There we go. There we go. All right, all right, all right. So there it is. This thing feels pretty hefty. Yeah, so I did try this out and uh, you know, it's pretty bright. As bright as, uh, they're, they're claiming somewhere around like, what is this, four, I mean, 4,800 lumen. And uh, I don't know if it's 4,800, maybe 4,000, maybe 3,000. I tested it against a zebra light that I have, which I love. If you guys are in the flashlight, zebra lights are, are awesome. And my zebra light is like 1,300 lumen. And so I can believe this, and it has a nice yellowish tint. So as opposed to those street lights, like I was telling you guys, this one actually looks like a, like a incandescent light. So I like that. That's cool. And it feels solid. All right, so let me tell you a little story here. Um, maybe the people at JJC are going to be watching this and, uh, yeah, good. Listen to what I have to say here. So I posted a review about this cause I did try it out. Right. So I actually hooked this up, made sure everything was working. I did all that. Um, so they said, Hey, you know, in one of your pictures, you know, there was a light reflecting off of this and they said it looked like it had a crack. And I said, they're like, you think you can help like take that down? I said, it's not a crack. It's a reflection. And uh, I said something to the effect like, uh, it feels sturdy and I have no reason to believe that it won't last a long time. So these guys are, are, uh, are based in China and maybe there was something lost in the translation there. But they're like, they gave me like, they messaged me with like crying emojis saying, uh, yeah, why do you say that? <laughs> why do you say you don't think it's going to last? I'm like, no, no, that's not what I said. I said, there's no reason for me to believe that it won't last a long time because it's built well. So anyway, yeah. If you guys are gonna send something, just send it to me. Let me do my thing, okay? Don't try to influence my, uh, my reviews. I don't like that. All right, so that's that. Next one, next up, I'm trying to go quick here. I know this is not what you're here for. Uh, all right, the light right over your baby's crib. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be nice, right? 4,000 4, lumen into the eyeballs. Um, so yeah, it's all LED, says Doc Holidays, um, bluish white lights. I like, yeah, it feels futuristic, but I think, um, I don't know if these, these people will ever know what it's like to be outside and have that like yellowish tint. I, I, I don't know if you guys have watched that documentary on, uh, I think on YouTube maybe, where they talk about how all the neon lights in, uh, in Hong Kong are all going to uh, something else. One second. Switch to internal battery? No, I don't want to do that. I just updated the firmware on this, um, on my Tascam recorder. And so it's telling me some new stuff that I've never seen before. It's saying, switch to internal battery, press to continue. No, I don't want to switch to internal battery. That's double A's. I want to keep it on this USB. All right. Oh, maybe it's saying, okay. 
All right, I'm back. I guess I got unplugged, so. All right, cool, next thing. Something else from JJC. And this is a outdoor security light. And the one that they sent me was a three head floodlight. Okay. It says 250 watts equivalent, uses only 30 watts. So that's a cool thing about the LEDs. They don't get as hot and they, uh, they use less electricity. So it says 2700 lumen. All right, cool. Uh, I heard that they haven't changed the the lights. This is what Angela told me. That they haven't changed the lights in certain cities where there's a lot of snow. Is that right, Angela? Well, they, they did change them. And uh -huh. they saw that there was a problem. Okay, so in like places that are snowy, I guess um, the, the heat from the lights uh, helps melt the snow. And with the LEDs, they ran so cool that it, did, it wasn't doing that. So, I don't know. Where was that? Do you know? I don't so they, they ended up changing them back? Uh, I'm not sure what they did or if they put some sort of heater or something. Alright, that's funny. That's funny. Alright, so uh, let me... Got some comments here. Uh, Daniel says, At my first squadron, we used the Behringer Amp 800 for the radios in our simulators. They seem to work pretty well. But I never would have considered them for home audio. Okay. What made you choose the FBQ 800 instead of software EQ? Good question. Also, um... So I am using software EQ right now. I use a Mac and I'm using something called AU Logic that enables me to use parametric EQ. So I'll take some calibrated mic measurements and you know I'll use REW to figure out what uh, changes I need to make in order to make it flat or however I need to make it sound. And then I'll use this program called AU Lab that, will, uh, that I can use all kinds of different effects on, right? But I think, so here's my point, right? Not everybody's going to do what I do with a calibrated mic and, you know, do all that. But also, uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of tricky because if it's running on my computer and let's say for right, for right now I have it plugged in, not with a DAC, but with a headphone jack, right, out. If I decide I want to plug in my headphones to my computer, now my headphones have that equalization, which I don't want. I want my headphones to be perfectly flat. I just want the equalization for my speakers, which are the Fluence uh, that I just reviewed, the Signature Series. I said that I like them at my desk, and it's true. I got them right here. Um, and I have a sub down here that I made, and I'm using the Dayton Audio 2.1 BT. And the FX Audio, which I'll get into in a little bit. I unboxed that last week. So yeah. All right, back to the light. I told them I'd unbox it live, so here it is. Boom, there's the light. There's a lot of like brackets and stuff in there. It's a chip on board, so you see the, the, the light right there. There it is. Uh, so one thing that's tricky though, so it has a little sensor, it, everything works. Um, the thing that's tricky though is mine has three heads on here. And when I looked at my, um, at my order, it said uh, three head, blah, blah, blah. When I clicked on it, it only showed like a two head version of this, right? So be careful of that. I'm going to leave a link to all of this stuff in the description, but just know that, uh, yeah, the link for that one is a two head version. All right. All right. All right. Before I get to the equalizer, uh, let me just give a quick update about this FX audio here. So let me see. If, let me zoom in here. You guys see that? So this is the t FX Audio Tube Zero, uh, yeah, Tube Zero One. And last time I unboxed this thing, and one channel wasn't working. And so I reached out to them, and they said they're gonna send me some new, new, um, what you call it, tubes, valves, whatever you want to call them. So they said they'd send me some new ones for this. And um, the funny thing is, I started playing it, and after like an hour and a half, two hours, they started working. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. I have no idea why that happened. I don't think that uh, warm-up time should be, uh, you know, hour and a half, two hours. But I am happy that the that it's working and it actually sounds pretty good. Like I would recommend for you guys to try it out for under fifty bucks. You know, I think it was forty-six dollars with the GE tubes that everybody recommends, and it does warm up the sound. In my podcast on Patreon, another plug for me. Uh, yeah, patreoncom forward slash Intel. Take a look. Um, yeah, I talked about how how the tube affects the sound. In my theory of how the, the tube affects the sound. 
Um, let me know if you what you think about this. But how many of you guys remember like old school video games like Nintendo, the original Nintendo, like Mario Brothers type of stuff? Um, if you ever remember watching that on your TV, it didn't look terrible, right? Mike Tyson's Punch Out. I don't know if you remember that, but um, what do you call it? If you ever to if you were to ever run a an emulator like something that would emulate it perfectly, right? And run it on your t on your you know 4K TV, it's gonna look so blocky, like extremely blocky, and it makes you like go back like, damn, look at how old that looks. It's so pixelated, right? But the truth is that your old TV, like old CRT TV that you probably had, tube, right? Cath cathro what is it? Cathode tube? C what a CRT. Cath cathode ray tube anyway um they had scan lines remember it had those lines and those lines would make it so that it looked better and i know this because i built a an arcade a mame arcade and um you know i'm like man it doesn't look right so i added some effects where it would add those scan lines it would add some blooming um and it would curve the the screen anyway it made it look a lot better and so it made me realize that those lines although it's seeming seems like it'd take away from the resolution it actually makes it look better more appealing to 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 my eyes at least and to a lot of people and i think that's because it acts as an anti-aliasing uh, filter right does that make sense yes yes anti-aliasing for sound uh you think it so hold on a second let me get back here uh my first squadron we use behringer it seemed to work well but okay Tubes are the best. Had something similar happen to me when I got mine after the first two hours. It never happened again. Exactly. So anti-aliasing for sound. Yeah. Um, so you don't think so. You don't agree, D Grizz, and that's fine. You think they add distortion, which I believe is true. A lot of people online say that it they add um, even order harmonic distortion, which is pleasing. It's musical. Like you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna harmonize, you're using even order uh, harmonies, uh, whereas something digital would add odd order uh distortion harmonics sure sure that's fine but uh to me uh anti-aliasing uh, to me i guess what i'm saying is yeah it does round out the sound it rounds it out uh so i'm not i'm not somebody who's going to claim that tubes you know enhance the sound because there's higher resolution i don't think it's higher resolution i think solid state is a higher resolution but it doesn't also always mean it's better better right so like you know uh if you watch a movie, it's probably going to be 24 frames per second. So that's not better than 60 frames per second. 60 frames per second is more samples, right, per second. But it doesn't mean it's more pleasing to your eye, right? Anyway, that's just my little rant about that. Um, anyway, it's working. I think for 46 bucks, I love it. I think it looks cool. Yeah. If anything, it's a cool volume control, right? And it acts kind of like my preamp. So I, it does add a little bit of gain. Excuse me. water is good tubes are nice for warming and la larger sound stage yeah that's that's the thing i wonder though is uh how is how do tubes like actually add, add how do they add to it you know what are they doing that would possibly add to it i don't know about that you know i know thomas and stereo i follow him i don't know if you watch him on youtube but he was saying how it makes it so the separation between the separation in the imaging is better with tubes. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, a lot of people like to describe what they're experiencing. So maybe that's what they're experiencing. You know, that guy has a ton of expensive stuff. So maybe that's what his stuff does. But to me, it's more, it just acts to smooth out the sound. Right? So not not blurring it, but just smoothing out the sound. Anyway, let's, let's move on to this other thing. I got to try this out. Um... Try it with a Sennheiser 600. I paired it with a 600. Okay. Uh, try what with the Sennheiser 600 series? That's what. Okay. Next up. Okay, so this I have not opened. All right. Get over here. What's up? All right, so this is it. The Behringer Mini FBQ. FBQ 800. That's a lot of FBQs. Uh, right. So this is a desktop equalizer. Have you guys heard that 
that stuff about uh, how Huawei and like those Chinese manufactured phones are not allowed. They're trying to say that you shouldn't use them because they're spying on you. What do you guys think about that? If, if that was the audio world, then they would hate Behringer. No Behringer allowed. Maybe they have some spy stuff in our in, in this equipment too, right? All right, what does it say? So this is a nine band uh, equalizer. FBQ feedback detection system instantly shows feedback frequency. So I guess if you're using this with like a microphone, which I won't be necessarily using, maybe I can use that for something else, but we'll see. Uh, low cut. So here's what I'm gonna be looking for in this product. I'm gonna look to see how much range there is, right? So it says either six or 12 dB. I'm gonna see if it adds noise because I don't want anything to add noise, uh, introduce noise into my system. And uh, just overall build quality and hopefully it affects the sound in the, in the way that I want it to. All right, so, uh-huh, Yahoo. Yeah, Maui. Yeah, Maui, Yahoo. We hear you. We hear you, Gracie. We hear you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. PATM. I don't know how to say your name, but uh, he asked, Do you have any experience with crossovers for subwoofers? It seems like the best option is a mini DSP since you're going to be spending $100 either way. Yeah. I, I do believe that... Uh, mini dsp is awesome for a sub i don't think it gets any better than that because a lot of people say that the, the most problems are with the um with the low frequencies and so if you can equalize those then uh yeah that's the best and you can definitely use a mini dsp for that also you can it makes it super easy to tweak the uh the the crossover point right different slopes yeah you can do a lot with that and, and the cool thing is if you get a, um, a calibrated mic, uh, you know, I use the U-Mic one, if you get one of those, then uh, you're not kind of like just guessing, right? So you can look at the chart, do some tests, and make sure that it's a flat frequency response from your speakers to the sub. So that's the thing I like about it. You're not guessing so much. Cool, all right. Let's see how big this thing is. Oh, 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 oh. that's not a good way to place that. Or I'm just an idiot. All right. All right. I'm glad it just didn't crack my trackpad. All right, cool. So, hey, Gracie. How about, like, uh, be quiet? Thanks. No, that doesn't work? Does that work? All right. So there it is. All right. <laughs> Uh, tube abs. Do you have any experience with crossovers? For okay, I already read that. There it is. All right, so this looks a little bit bigger than, than I expected from the pictures, which is not necessarily bad, but man, is this thing plastic. Let me hear how the... That's metal. That's plastic. Uh, super light Super light. All right, that's it's okay. Uh, this is 99 bucks. I think uh, is it nine? No, no 69 bucks something like that Let's See how it looks over here mm. <sighs> Just got back from the park so a little bit tired here all right, so there it is. I wonder how this is going to look over here. All right. Let's see here. If I put this somewhere. That thing is huge. Look at that thing compared to this. <laughs> All right. It's okay. I'll figure out something. It's going to hide me. Usually I have my, my MacBook here, so I don't really see what's behind it anyway. But I'm kind of curious. What do you guys think of graphic equalizers? Just... Don't put it in the hot bed. All right. All right. Time to plug this thing in. Do I have... What can I plug in here? Um, what can I unplug is the question. All right. One second. 
All right. All right, let's plug this thing in. All right. All right, I'm back. So, looks like we have, uh, I forgot what those large connections are called. Maybe you guys can help me out here. It has those and it has RCAs, which is what is most important to me. That's weird. The paint is like, is like smeared on there. Look, like they printed on it and like smeared it. Okay, so what I need, uh, I need some RCAs. I bought these mono price ones, which are cool. These are cool uh, RCAs, but they're super thick, which are it's good if you're using like a long run. But these are uh, like a foot and a half, which is, you know I thought would be good just because of how short this would be. But they're so thick that like yeah i they basically like i can't place stuff as far back along the wall because this is sticking out so yeah either i should have got a longer one um i have some other ones here that are way better that came with the um the amp that i reviewed the burson audio so i have that burson here i was just testing out the dayton because i wanted to try out a sub so theirs came with these and as you can tell, look at how much softer these cables are. You see that? That's how these RCAs fold. And this is how these fold. You can tell, like, too, too much. So, probably have to get something else here. Uh, anyway, let us do this. So, I can tell you right now that noise-wise, let's see. Let me see if I can put the mic so you can hear how much noise my system has okay so I'm gonna move the mic Whoa. I'm gonna move the mic uh, really close to the to the speaker and so I'm gonna turn this up all right so I'm gonna just go ahead and so you can hear that there is some hiss added when I turn this up. My air conditioning's on too, so. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, DEQ2496 is a digital EQ, has optical in and out. That's awesome. So you're gonna do the equalization in the digital domain, so that's cool. This is analog, obviously. But yeah, so here's. That's max. I would never put it there. This is about as loud as I ever put it right here. So, I don't know if you can tell, but let me see if I can hear anything. Yeah, not hardly anything. Barely anything. Okay. By the way, I'm using those uh, inexpensive headphones that I modified. All right, I don't think I need my headphones right now. All right, so let me plug this in here. I am gonna, let's see, what should I do? I'm gonna go from the computer to, so it goes, hold on, how does this go? The computer is going into, what is the source? Okay, so the computer is going to the Dayton Audio. And... Okay. So the Xiaomi Mi Box is going to the FX Audio. And the FX Audio is going into the... Uh, into the uh, Dayton Amp. Alright. Let me turn this back around. Sorry if it makes any noise. Alright. So let's see here. What do I want to do? I think what I want to do is I want to play music through here. So that's going to go 
this input here. Auto input, okay. So that's gonna go into the input here. And this will go out to the tube preamp, okay. See, look at this thing. It's too stiff and too short, not good. That's what she said. Not me though. All right, so let's plug this in. All right, on. All right, sorry. All right, so let's see here. What is going on? Plugged in, plugged in. Angela, can you turn on the, the switch from here? Uh, yeah. Real quick. The light? Yeah. I think that's what I have it connected to. Is it on? Yeah. All right, cool. So there it is. Let me turn this down so you can see how these lights look. Uh, I don't know if you can tell. Hold on. Yeah. So cool little red lights. All right. I'm cool with that. I'm cool with that. All right, let me zoom back out here. Whoa, that's bright. All right. Here, let's play with some of this these settings here. Let's see what this does. All right, so if I level, 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 level. Okay. Let me play something on here. Uh, let's see. YouTube. These sliders don't. Uh, they feel pretty plasticky, but it's all good. Um, EQ mode, FBQ in. So, they have a setting for 12 dB or 6 dB. I mean, I'll keep it on 12. Uh, input, low cut. No, I don't want a low cut. Meter. I don't know what meter select is, but I'm going to... I guess I'll find out. All right. Let me play some test music here. <laughs> That's D Grizz's favorite song. All right. Yeah, let's play this one here. The best piano, it says here. Okay. Sorry. Let's see what happens.
Okay. going on here. Stupid RCA cables, man. And, okay, maybe that's it. That's it. I needed to press this button. That in, out, okay. Got it. Air in the lines. There we go. Let me turn this back down. All right, cool, so. Expert Joey, what's going on? Midnight unboxing? Yeah, midnight, it's it's nine, nine. Yeah, it's nine, we're about nine here. So, let me change this back to 12 dB. Can you guys see what the hell I'm doing here? Hopefully. So, 12 dB. Tell me if you can hear the sound difference right here. I'm just gonna boost the bass. It works. I would never do this, by the way. There you go, that sounds like it. Cool, so it works. Let's see how, uh, how it affects the noise. That's, a, that's another question. So I'm gonna put everything on neutral here. All right. All right. Um, acoustic guitar. All right. So yes, you can hear the difference. That's good. Let's see if uh, if it adds any uh, noise back into here. I'm gonna be put this back into the, real close to the speaker here. There is some hiss, but I probably increased the gain over here too. Let me see here. Yeah, so this is with the gain on this all the way up. Let's go a little bit more. So this is all the way up. Like I said, I'd never really do that. I'd probably keep it around here. And let me see. as I ever want this thing. So that's probably where I'd put the gain. Well, let me just put it to the middle, so a little bit over. Okay. So let me pause this, see what kind of noise I hear. Huh? Not too bad. Not too bad. I wouldn't say it's perfect. I wouldn't say it's perfect, but uh, yeah. I definitely think it's not adding a ton of noise because that was my one of my concerns is uh, one of the reviews said that this thing adds a ton of noise. Guy did some measurements, all that. I'm sure it does. I'm sure it does. Um, let me see what happens when I turn all of the sliders up. So that would be an increase of 12 decibels across the board. So let's see. Okay, I get it. I see what's going on here. So yeah, definitely when you in increase by 12 decibels, of course that's gonna increase the noise. And it did, but I was able to just compensate by turning the level down. So 
Uh, first thing is, most people who are experienced with with uh, equalizers will tell you that it's better to cut rather than to boost. So I'm just gonna put this all back to normal, and I'm gonna have fun playing with this thing. What I'm curious about is, yeah, Joseph says that's a lot of noise to me. Uh, yeah, and keep in mind I have the mic like really close up to the speaker, and I crank this thing up like way louder than. You know, it probably causes distortion if I were to play music at the volume, but yeah, I just wanted to see. You know, it's good to know what what uh, what it can do if you're not doing it right. But I think you know my my initial impression is just that I think it's it's workable. You know, it's not adding a ton of noise. Like I, I definitely. So here's the thing: the what was the other thing? The BBE uh, Sonic Maximizer that I was trying out last time. It worked, but it was adding too much noise. You know, I, I couldn't deal with it. This, uh, on the other hand, um, it probably does add some noise, but we'll see. We'll see if uh, what it does is worth it. You know, because what you have to keep in mind is the signal to noise ratio. So like right now you hear some hiss, right? But if I were to play music, it'd probably be like too loud anyway, right? So at that volume, if you heard that amount of hiss, you'd, you'd never notice it. So, let me just turn this to the levels that I'd probably put them at. Right there, right there. Okay. Yeah, I think this is going to work. Bless you. You guys watch my review on these uh, speakers? You remember I was saying that there's a dip? around the three kilohertz range. So I could fix that right here. It was about six dB, so it was a pretty big dip. And I think you could notice it easily on this song right here. This song, the Jabberheads one. All right, I'm bumping up here. I'm gonna go extreme here. You sit alone. The there you go. There's a dip. I fixed it. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I add this. I can get to exa exactly 6 dB. Oh, that's the wrong one. 2K and 4K. Okay, so from original was like this, and then if I go up, what does this do? Alright, alright, so yeah. It works. It works. I'm gonna see. You know, I have some D, uh, some EQ correction from Room EQ Wizard, specifically made for these speakers. I'm gonna see if I can just replicate that sound using this equalizer. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. As you know, you know, I just do these these unboxings with you guys. What is that top green button on the left doing? Top green button. So I think this in, it says in and out. So basically it makes it so it can either bypass this thing or not. Yeah. And the cool thing is if you turn this off, it also bypasses it. So yeah, that seems like a, some kind of bypass. Cool. What do you guys think? You think this is cool at a desk? I think it's pretty cool. Not for music production. I'm just saying like if you have like a little setup at your desk and if you don't want to use mini DSP, you know. It's not cheap, you have to buy that mic too, so. This is, I think it's cool. You know, if you're somebody who likes to tweak things. Here's another thought that I had. Uh, you know how some songs are louder than others, right? So there's no real standard. There's supposed to be a standard for how loud or or, or quiet a song is, but you know, obviously there people either don't follow that or whatever, because if you even log into Spotify, you'll see an option for like auto volume leveling or something like that. So if they can't even agree on something as simple as volume, 
what makes you think that there's a standard see this is my problem i think a lot of audiophiles believe that there's a standard that flat is the standard so like that these these recording artists like record everything so that it's for a flat frequency response so hopefully you're gonna have a flat frequency response so when you hear it it's gonna sound like how they expected it but i don't believe that that's true i think that they make their recording studio sound good to them flat ish right but i'm pretty sure that they they have their own you know eq set up so it sounds good to them and then uh hopefully it sounds good on your speakers too um my point being what's wrong with me adjusting the eq on my end you know i want to be able to adjust this on the fly and that's something that you can't do with a u mic one and a mini dsp you can't adjust it on the fly per song so let's say if i hear a song I'm like man that's these guys are too crazy or i was watching some uh paul mccartney interview on youtube and like the recording was bad like his you know when they'd play the music it was loud and then when his voice would come out it was just it wasn't you know it wasn't eq'd very well um i think they had the mic too far or something like that but wouldn't it be cool if instead of turning up the volume i could just mess up mess with the sliders here or let's say if i'm listening at night and uh you know i don't want to wake up the kids maybe i could just turn down the bass a little bit right that's cool that's something that you cannot do with a uh, um, mini DSP on the fly. Huh. What do you guys think? Sometimes there's something that, about tactile buttons to me, uh, buttons and, and knobs and sliders that appeal to to my inner uh, OCD, I guess you could say. Anyway, anything else here? Anything you guys want to talk about? Otherwise, I'm gonna go and play with my toys. Anything? Anything? No? No, no. I dig it. I would like it in all black. Yeah, this would look cool in all black, Joseph. Man, I wish... Here's what I would want. Tell me if you guys would be down for this, all right? Um, you know those companies like Shit Audio. They make these cool DACs where it's like... they, You know, you see people stacking up their DAC. And then they have their headphone amplifier. And then they have their... You know, their power amplifier for their speakers. All in their desk, like a little mini stack, right? Um, kind of reminds me of like how in the, it, like the 70s, I guess, they'd have like those stereo uh, stereo racks, right? Got their receiver, their amplifier, their EQ, turntable, tape decks, right? So uh, they'd have their, their rack. It would be cool to have like a company like Shit Audio make one of these that's like metal, you know what I mean? Like super nice build quality, very low, uh, low, di low uh, distortion, low signal, uh, you know, low noise. That would be cool. I wish they would do that. So I don't know if they're, they're listening to my, my stuff, but I would love it if they did that. I think they'd sell a ton of them. Somebody do it, please. All right. Uh, let's see. Expert Joey says, how's the review of the Wharfdale Crystal 4.3 is coming along? That is coming soon. Which one do you guys want me to review first? Do you want me to compare the Crystal 4.3 to the ELAC uh, F5.2s? Right? The F5.2 towers. So they're the tower version of the B, the debut 2.0 uh, B5.2s. So three, three uh, five and a quarter inch drivers. So I can... Rec I can do that review, or I can do uh, the Wharfdale Diamond 11.1 .1 versus the ELAC UB5. Damn. Tower versus tower first. Daniel, uh, you'd love to see me do more headphone reviews. You know what? Truth, truth is, there's a lot of people doing headphone reviews that are way more qualified than me. All right? So... Um, shoot yeah i see a lot of these guys they have a ton of headphones look at me i'm using some 24 dollars headphones with like a a thing covering because i modified it so that i could uh i could make this removable before it had like one super long cable is like nine feet something stupid and so i made it so it's uh, removable but i had to get to it and i had to remove this adhesive that was here like that said you know the name of the headphone and so without it it affected the sound so i put like I put this anyway uh the other thing about um about headphones is you know i like to back up my claims uh about what i'm hearing with measurements so i can do that when i have a u mic one 
uh when i'm doing a headphone measurement though that won't work like you need you need one of those little dummy heads with uh with the ears and everything because the ears affect the sound so in order to replicate what i'm capable of doing I'd, i think i'd need a whole new setup in order to do that so uh diy headphones i don't know who do you guys follow for for headphone reviews i know z review does like headphone stuff um Who's the who's the newish guy who's coming up right now? Forgot his name. Um, I subscribed to him. I forgot. Hold on. Hmm. What's this guy's name? Yeah. Who do you guys follow for for headphone reviews? I'm gonna see. This guy's been doing a lot of reviews lately. It says yeah, Z reviews. Let me see. Who do I sub subscribe to? Uh Hmm Uh mm. Damn, what's that guy? Jo is it Joshua Valor? Is that his name? Yeah, Joshua Valor. This guy does a lot of reviews on headphones. Yeah. Take a look at this guy. He's coming up. He's blowing up right now. He's got he's got 4500 subscribers right now. He's doing like a like a video a day or something crazy. So, I don't know how you do it, Joshua, but uh yeah. Good job and and good production value too. You know, it's hard to do quantity and still do quality. And that's that's a tough balance. You know, I don't do videos very often, but I try to make the best possible video, but just as a stopgap, that's why I do these unboxings where you know, it's just me right here yeah just just doing my thing um yeah hanging out with you guys mkbhd thinks the m50s are the good headphones so he's not a good source <laughs> what's you know what the m50s aren't uh that, you know here's the funny thing the m40x's are better right the m50s you know my only complaint really with them is just that they sound very closed in because they're closed back but um yeah i probably should have i probably should have kept the m40s i ended up uh, returning those just because like I like the way that the M50s look the ones that I got so it is what it is uh, all right Grid says if you can give honest reviews and not just make it so people click your Amazon referral links people will follow you all right all right all right I need people click, uh, clicking on my links though you know what I mean this stuff is hard work <laughs> click my links please uh, hello Hello, Mr. Mofo to you, Mo Mufu to you. Uh, exactly, M40Xs are much better. Uh, you know what? I like these. These are 24 bucks on on uh, Parts Express. They also have them on Amazon, but you know they charge that 6.95 shipping. So whatever, they're still cheap. These are I like these headphones. Comfy, and I got these uh, the Deconi pads. So my pad, the pads on here are more expensive than my headphones. These pads are like like 80 bucks or something like that and yeah they feel they feel good uh daniel said Okay, I'm back. All right. All right. Anyway, anyway, maybe that's that's saying that I should go. Uh, what was I saying? What was I saying? Yeah, yeah. MDR7506. You guys saw those, uh, those SHP 9500s that I reviewed? Those things shot up in price because they got discontinued. Those were decent. They're not worth like, I don't know, hundreds of dollars. I bought them at $37 or something like that. 
and they were cool for $37, but not for $300. Dang. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Thought it was my internet. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, so to answer the question, so...